Yeah. Is it on? Yeah. So I said to them, my brethren, uh, the Bible said, let us be brethren. I said, we have different outlooks and interpretations of what's going on. I said, we don't have to be enemies. I said, what I came to say was two things. Number one, in it, we're glad to see the ministers uh, organized and hope that you will do something. I said, and anything that you want to start asking, we will automatically endorse it. The Alabama Christian will automatically, you have our automatic endorsement. You don't have to ask them. I said, on the other thing, I said, now listen, Dr. Wayne, I'm not concerned about what people say about me. I said, and I'm going to be brotherly regardless. I said, but the people want action. And somebody got to give it to them. I said, now, I'm not asking you to do what I do. Because I know about uh, the clan. And I'm not afraid of the clan. I'm not saying you are. I said, but take my position. And this is it from Ken to Ken. If God tells me to jump, it's my place to jump and his place fix the place for me to land. And I said, I know that is what most people do. I said, but I think God would look worse telling me to jump, not fix the place for me to land. Then I was for jumping in faith. So it's mine to jump. And so whatever you all do, just remember that. We're going to do what we think we must do. We're going to fight segregation, whether you like it or not, whether you go with us or not. And that did a lot to do because when we would only avoid of Dr. King coming in, you know. And uh, King tried to apologize them for not asking them, but I had to get back up and say, now, Dr. King is uh, speaking and he hopes that he can get you, but you can't, you have to be truthful. Actually, if you had voted for him to come in, he couldn't come in. But, but he's in because the Alabama Christian Movement asked him. And we hope to have your cooperation. I didn't make any bill. I never believe in this line. You have to. Mm -hmm. King was trying to so apologize or not asking them, you know, saying to them to come in. And you had actually invited. I invited him to come and said that as Birmingham goes, so goes the nation. Mm -hmm. That we've got the this citadel of segregation, and Blue County is the is the, is the symbol. And if if you come and you remember Mr. Carmen talking about the jail, we can actually feel the jail across there. And really, Birmingham was the strongest affinity. Mm -hmm. The only Birmingham was the strongest affinity. Oh yeah, Montgomery didn't do too much, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but Birmingham, we always were doing something here in jail. We always kept the headline. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we agreed up in the end of '62 mm -hmm. to come. And here we come to those meeting with the Sid Smile and others. You want that? <laughs> yes, because they had really determined that they were not going to recognize you, right? They had not. Uh -huh. The only time I met the power struck in this city, despite the fact that my church had been bombed twice, the bomb of 56 and 58, second bomb, when the clan set the bomb against the wall trying to destroy the church. And uh, Colonel Dodge and John L. Lewis said it in the street and dug a six foot hole in the street. It would have came to all that. And I wouldn't have had a base to operate. Here again, God decrees that. Uh, the, when they knew that SCLC would come in, Lucius Pitts, Gaston, and some of the others. And remember, I was friends with all of them. It wasn't a matter that we were in there. You don't have a vowel thing. You don't have those short ones. Those. Mm -hmm. These are lame men. No. Yeah. Um, since my, see, they had met, and, and, and you must remember that this power stuff, he had a knack of meeting with people like Gaston and Pitt mm -hmm. and others. And thought that they represented the Negro. But Mr. Gaston, <coughs> I understand, told him 
But he said in the meeting when I first went there, I said, well, just like I told you, Mr. Smiley, uh, I got some money, said, but Fred got the people. Mm -hmm. He's the boy with the marbles, and you had to talk with him. So that's how I met him. That's the way you got him. Oh, yeah. So then Mr. Smiley wanted to give me great honor. And, uh, yeah, well, I'm glad to meet you. I said, well, and this and that. I said, well, I'm not too sure that you would happen to meet me. Because my church has been run twice. I never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And and we'll call me doctor. And I, went on. I said, well, we don't need the managers. We're here to find out what you can do. Well, we want to see if we can keep Dr. King out of here. And I just simply said, Mr. Smile, I'm surprised that you all around the city at this time. It, it was a It's so nice to have you in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. I said, we'd be here. King's Madison's come here too. Well, I, I, I think it's a nice man, but we just don't want no demonstrations. I said, well, what can you do to prevent demonstrations? I said, because otherwise, I'd be wasting my time. I'm trying to fight segregation. So that first meeting, as I recall, they were saying that they they uh, couldn't make commitments. So I said, well, we waste time. There's nothing for us to talk about. And I think the first initial meeting, we, we left. But they called back the very next day. The King and Abernathy. I'm not sure they went there the first time. And uh, on that side with that, them, Louis Pizitz, the stores where those young people were arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, Louis Pizitz was there especially. And uh, the man from Lubman. Was it true that uh, the Birmingham business community actually sent a delegation to Atlanta to meet with, with Martin before they even talked with you? Might and Martin sent them back saying you had to talk with Fred. I heard that, but that I wouldn't put anything above them. Mm -hmm. But Martin knew that first of all, his hope and the hope of the movement depend on what mm -hmm. my movement and I would do. Right. This isn't to say that. We are so important, but at there this time when things are designed to happen mm -hmm. in this place or that place, and there are people destined to assume the stage to flip to their own. I think I had heard about that. I didn't put too much credence in it because I never even asked Mark mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about it. But SCLC needed Birmingham, especially after all the years. And they had already known that Bull Connor and all the clan hadn't stopped us from going. And then you must remember now, we're in 62, but in 58, there are some incidents that you should know that helped to crystallize Martin's opinion that Birmingham was to play. Mm -hmm. And I'll just give them to you here yeah. so we can get into that and you can come, call me back. We meet in St. James Baptist Church. Down there. And this is where the bull was going to use the fire chief to stampede the meeting. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, Martin was sitting there. St. James had driving all around. It was packed. Mm -hmm. Martin was here and several others visiting from Montgomery. Bill Shorten was giving a financial report. And I'm sitting there. And, uh, all of a sudden, flashing lights come down. And then another thing, they would have somebody inside. And what we say inside could be heard outside. What you call those things? The mics, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. system. The police. Whatever, yeah, megaphone. Yeah. Whatever we were saying inside could be heard outside. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. But we weren't doing everything to hide. Mm -hmm. So the chief. So one time there were two police, okay, not the chief. And they would come and stand up so that we'd have the hours packed, and then they wouldn't tell us to ask the people to, to, to get out the house. Where are they going? So we 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 opened uh, the church that around the corner and had a happy church for the folks there. Um, so I got up, I said, Well, what's happening? They said, Well, Reverend. We want the eyes clear. I said, all right, all right. So then, uh, as soon as we had got the eyes clear, then they come back in and standing up. 
So Bill was back up talking. I said, just a minute, Bill. I said, gentlemen, what in the hell y'all think this is? If we can't stand in the house, you can't stand in the house. Get the hell out, I'll put Bill into the church and bring him back. And boy, the folk, this, this is how you kept the spirit of him. Mm -hmm. So they said, oh, 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 we saw them. So they had to go out that night. Mm -hmm. Else we would have got the people that we just put out. Martin said, Fred, I don't see how you would say that. He said, the movement is really strong in this city. I said, strong in that month. So it was, it was in, the, I believe it was in the next month or the next two weeks, they were up here again, and Chief Knox himself came. And we were in the same church. It wasn't over a month different. That's the place where also Bill put his hand up the police, 58 police uh, arresting for touching the north to interfere. Um, so Marvin said, that, so Chief Knox comes out. So the fire department comes in. You know, they want to come in with the hats on you, both can do it. And, and, and Bill was talking. I said, Bill, that's a minute. So I got up and I said, now, gentlemen, I said, now the fire that you're all trying to put out is not in here. And you know it. You can't put this fire. I said, but what we do, we cooperate. I said, everybody look around and see if you see anything under your seat. They're looking for a bomb. I said, let them come and look. I said, well, y'all hope come look and get the hell out. Tell me we're going to have our meeting. People that's a problem. <laughs> so then Chief Knox comes down. I said, Chief, now we're just about tired of, of this. I said, now, we're just tired of Bull Connor harassing us. Well, I'm going to assure you, now I'm standing up and he's down and I, he, I wouldn't be having pictures at me. He said, Reverend, I assure you, you know, all over New York and everywhere else, they, they have fire codes. I said, well, we've been trying to obey, but your men come out here. They want us to get out of the aisle and they stand, but we ain't going to do that. I said, in fact, Chief, I'm, I'm sorry to shoot the words, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, in fact, I'm just tired of Bull Connor harassing us. And I think tonight, I said, do you have any room in your day? I said, because we about to make it. I said, we just about to. I said, how many of y'all ready to go today? Everybody want ready tonight. I said, we just tired of this damn harassment, huh? Mm -hmm. And the folk just stood up. Mm -hmm. I said, Chief, you got room for all these? <laughs> Reverend, I assure you that it isn't book <laughs> harassing you. It, we're just simply trying to do fire. I said, Chief, are you sure? That, I'm just rubbing it in. Mm -hmm. I said, Chief, are you sure that Bull ain't sent you down there to do this next? Reverend, I, I raised my hand. I sure we just I said, all right, Chief Taylor, we're gonna obey the all. But tell Boo, we are just damn tired of them harassing us. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get folks here. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it does. You use that really to your advantage. To my advantage and mm -hmm. to to uh, let folk know that we yeah. can assert in the same way. Mm -hmm. And Marvin was there both time. And he couldn't understand. He said, Boy, I don't. I could have done that. I said, yes, you could have. If you could have for the moment. The modern moment, he couldn't have done And he couldn't have. But I didn't say that to him. But uh, uh, I always had charge of the situation. I had a ready answer. And I anticipated, I think that that's probably one of the things. I never was surprised at what the segregationists did. Mm -hmm. The only time I was surprised by them was like, uh, well, it's been so many incidents. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Well, that's. I mean, do the, the incident. No, the incident is what makes the story. So, uh, the incident leads to the freedom. Yeah. And I, I just leave that for a moment but to show you. You know, I tell you, I was never surprised. Mm -hmm. But they would come up to me, and like one day it came up to the church. You know, I was arrested about at least three times on a vagrancy warrant. I was going to try to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, it so happened that. Uh, a, 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 a school teacher had was out about three o'clock in the morning. Had some liquor in the car, and the police had stopped the car. And now she had this liquor, and they could find had enough find like that, so they made them have sex with both of them. Oh, is that right? Oh yes. She came over the next day and told me about it. So I talked to the chief. That's why she's in my office. I always try to be above board. It wasn't a thing that I tried to harass them unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. So the chief wanted to know why she 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 come to you. I said, because she felt like if she come to you, you wouldn't do nothing about it. And they had told her to come back the next night and want some more, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I told the chief all of this. And we arranged, uh, 
Chief, I don't know what he told him not to come out. You never know. But but she did go back out. But she knew that we, we had at least five cars around. They watched. They watched. And but the police, they had gone through that just before she got there, as I recall. But they never came back. So that, but so then uh, for that, and the next week they said that somebody had claimed to say that somebody had done some pulling of somebody's genitalia. That is not me, but I reported it to them. Mm -hmm. You understand? That what people would say to me and make sure that people were not lying. So they get me on Vegas at once. So whenever they want to prevent something, because they know I was in action, they put me in there on a Vegas at once. You can't get a month. And I was in there, I think, at least, uh, what, two or three times. And I, I was looking at some papers here the other day where Mr. Shores had filed something against them for arresting me on Vegas, and the FBI had somebody in its file. But you could expect them to do anything. It's just that you were late and that you had to be uh, be prepared. So we come into this idea now of uh, the second meeting, back smile. And I was, I sort of, you know, I could have acted nasty. And even, uh, Miles College president uh, uh, Pitts. He was surprised at how nice I was and how gentle and yet how part. He said, "You know, Fred, people got the impression that you're mean, tough." He said, "But I, I could have done like you done." I said, "Well, uh, you know, in a fight, people say everything, and they were acting like me. They left, you know, you know, you reading people now say about the middle class." I always regard the middle class as people who are blessed. And I didn't necessarily consider myself one of them. But I never had an enemy in the middle class. Mm -hmm. I just do segregation had to be. Mm -hmm. no, and so John Drew, uh, uh, the man that had the insurance company, what's his name? That was Drew. No, Drew had insurance, but uh, 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 fathers up there, nice daughter had it. Uh, the slender guy got on the first one on the school board. Yeah, um, I know what you're talking yeah. Well, he and he was he was a good friend of mine mm -hmm. and quiet, and I had good friends around. I just didn't. I wasn't close to John and Dean and Drew like Martin and what they'd go out to their house and so forth, which wasn't my thing necessarily. Mm -hmm. But uh, always we were friends. I never had any words with any of the middle class people. It, it, it just wasn't my thing, but the paper would put it. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen that in the. You're always at odds with the with yeah. people. Yeah. I was just determined to do my thing. I knew I had the power to do it because the people mm -hmm. backed me up, and I didn't have to request from them. Right. In addition, at, indeed, had, I, had they had to vote on it, we wouldn't have had where we are today. You know that? Mm -hmm. People don't vote to go into bombings and all that kind of stuff. But I realized that, that these were good people, and I, I, I loved them, actually. But I realized I had a job to do, and I couldn't be ten because of friendship or, mm -hmm. or other things. So then, uh, uh, in this hectic, dramatic meeting where we thought we made a breakthrough, and there are just so many things about it that you can just take time. Um, Mr. Smyre was saying that he really was, we didn't have to demonstrate. I said, no, there's no, there's no alternative to demonstration if you all don't do something. So then, um, I believe we was seeing this. Well, how did he say we need the water? I said, no, not water. We have to have toilet now. I said, this, we, our women go in and can't, you know, use the toilet. And this and that. I said, how can you? I said, well, that's where the problem is. Well, Louis Vincent's with me hardest person there. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, he was my my rabbi, I think he was doing. My rabbi said this and that. I said, look, it ain't what your rabbi said. Now, 
And I realized that he was going to be the point man, right. incorrigible. Mm -hmm. So after we were talking, I said, I tell you what, Mr. Pitt, I, I said, I've just made a decision. The modern rapper said, I need all the talk. I said, I have decided that Martin Luther King, Ralph, and I are going to be arrested at your school. Mm -hmm. be right I said, we'll, when we go arrested, we are going to walk. We're going to be dragged in. Okay. Then when we get in jail, we're not going to shave. We're not going to eat. It's going to be harassed. And when we come out, we're looking bad. Folk won't go to your store no more. Mm -hmm. So Lumberland, man, this is, this is how. So the man at Lumberland said, well, let me go make a call. And he wasn't really going hard alone to make a call. He came back, I gave him in a minute. He said, you know, I think I got part of the solution. What is it? He said, uh, my maintenance man was painting on the door. He had painted some, had slopped a little paint on that sign. And I told him, oh, he'll go ahead and paint on the sign. I said, now you are a wise thinking white man. If all y'all do like that, we won't have problems. Mm -hmm. And that was that was the beginning of the agreement that, that we would not announce it. And I didn't announce it. Mm -hmm. You hear you say I was out for I, I was out for publicity, mm -hmm. but I didn't I said, no, no, no. We we realized you. And one of the things we had tried to get the budget to do was to join with us in a suit against the city. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to do that. Uh because I felt as if we were really fighting segregation. They, so I said, well, now, if you can't join with us, we have to be against you. You know, let me back up just a yeah. I Go just ahead. thought about, just thought about something. Yeah. Nothing but in this situation, I don't want to forget that I want to look uh, A.G. Gaston said to, to Pitt when I was arguing with Pitt. Mm -hmm. He said, now, Mr. Pitt, I, I'm surprised at you. He said, now, you and I started together. He said, you were walking around here with clothes on your back, selling them to Negroes, and Negroes made your money. He said, now, uh, and it says, office, you can't agree with that. Now, I, 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 that's one of the things that I had made me have a lot of respect mm -hmm. at that time. Yes. Lady mm -hmm. Go ahead. Harrison Salisbury. Yeah. From the New York Times came out. He wrote this article that cried out to the world, saying yeah. what Birmingham was about. The bomb, the whip, yeah. yes. And everything the city did. They did. Then the use of a, of a book that had black and white rabbits. <laughs> and uh, the city fathers then filed a suit against the, the New York cartel. It was together, it was clues again. They and Montgomery, was the Montgomery man that filed a suit with. Okay. Uh, I thought it was the city. I think it was the Montgomery, uh, Sullivan and Montgomery. Oh, okay. But anyway, the Senate did tirade the Post and the, 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 yeah. the editors, all of them spoke. And they even spoke on the CBS film. Mm -hmm. But I think it was the case with Sullivan and Montgomery. But they were all in collusion mm -hmm. as to what they could do to stop us, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. How did the, uh, the movement react to to that? to that event? Uh, well, you know, I was interviewed uh, and I said what Saul Barrow wrote was true because it was. And uh, Sullivan came out and sued, but you, you you couldn't sue the New York Times without attaching it to some people in Alabama. Uh -huh. So that was me, King, Abernathy, and C, four of us, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And Joe Lyle, right. finally. And um, uh, we were sued for what, three and a half million dollars or something like that. It was, uh, oh, we, when I'm speaking to folks, I'm worth more for what I ain't got than what I ain't really <laughs> had. Uh, but Judge Walter B. Jones, you know, mm -hmm. I think uh, issued the, in this thing also. So we had to, the suit was tried before him. Mm -hmm. I believe it was. Yes. Yesterday we were trying to think of a judge's name. I went back to the thing and uh, uh, Rep Parker, anyway, was that one of the? He was the judge that said that uh, the Brown decision was null and void because the Southern Congressman and Senator hadn't ratified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But he was here when he was here. Father was here. Yeah. But the, the case was tried in Montgomery. Right. Oh, okay. The Sullivan case was tried in Montgomery because I was there. Mm -hmm. I always remember <laughs> these little funny things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm convinced that you can't laugh at things you would be bush. You have to. Joe Lowry, we were there, you know, and Joe Lowry had on a golden green suit, iridescent, holding in the light. And had shoes on and, and, and had a had a big round hole in his in his shoe. Mm -hmm. And so I always was sort of talking up. So Joe was telling me, Fred, Fred, be be serious. Respect the jury and throw the jury. I said, Negro, do you think you're gonna be wearing a hundred dollar suit and shoes with a hole in the sofa that the jury thinking that the jury go take pity on you, they're gonna say cause beat them all. <laughs> <laughs> but we were there in this this court and uh we knew that uh we were gonna lose the case. They bring up the name of Sammy Davis. You know, Sammy Davis mad the white wife as well. And they were almost every other word, and so and so so, and Sammy Davis, and this and that went on the top. <laughs> I don't think we testified. I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. We did, it was very minor, mm -hmm. minuscule. Mm -hmm. It was a rigged thing. The jury was going to do it anyway. So the, the verdict was against us. Mm -hmm. And you must remember that I lost my car at 7 Clement. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And, uh, it, First little house I told you that I had bought the suit. Right. I had to, but I I had sent us to give L. J. Rogers a predated mortgage. Mm -hmm. So that he filed that mortgage. And they would have taken that. Mm -hmm. So he built two block houses on it. Yeah. Uh, that's the only way I that's the only thing I saved out there, but I lost my my my, my, my car. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see what else was. I think uh Joe Lowry Lost his car, he got it back. But I never did get anything for mine. Mm -hmm. So Alabama owes me something right now. Yeah. 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 Um, when getting back to that, to the. Yeah, Bull, Bull Connor was aware of the negotiation. He didn't think that these businessmen ought to be talking with us. Right. Mr. Carr never did, I say never did respect me, but I respected him, you know, in his capacity. He just didn't have the capacity to be the town leader that maybe I should have had. Uh, so he had, I don't know whether he had people reporting to him or not, but he, he did have the capacity to go around and find violations mm -hmm. in these people. This is how he was going to harass them, mm -hmm. see. And I understand during the same time that we were meeting, that he was doing this. Mm -hmm. So he put out that they had a bit of meeting with us, blah, 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 and all that bad. And uh, and he had people report to him that they had painted over the segregation side. Mm -hmm. So he threatened to put them in jail. That's where it broke down. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things I say now, and, 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 I don't know, I guess all roads lead to Rome. But I think it would have been a great thing. See, I didn't meet David Band during this thing. They were trying to get this like you know, all this came up at the same time. Right. And wouldn't it have been nice if whites and blacks had been able to sit down and talk together, even then, to coordinate. Right. When did you first meet David Band? It was maybe it was probably after the demonstration. Mm -hmm. When I met him to know him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh we should get this in. Uh I thought always that people should talk face to face when they're talking. When Kennedy had sent Bud Marshall in here. I respect the man. But Bud Marshall was 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 uh, about to sell us down the river. Mm -hmm. In the sense that he was negotiating with the whites on one side, and then we just committed Martin to up on the other. I wasn't in too many of those meetings. Mm -hmm. But Martin knew he wasn't going to have, couldn't agree to anything that I didn't go with. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, and, and I did it to show, because people thought I was so hard, okay, so long as we're making progress. Because, see, you must remember that 
that uh, and it, it isn't generally written in all, but they had to agree the three things to come into bed again. And didn't carry any of them out. <laughs> Number one, we were to have joint statements. Because I had seen in other places where Mark would make a statement and not coordinate it with the local leader. And the local leader was lost in the shuffle, and when Martin pulled out, it was a big mess. Joint statements. If that's true, then the, the letters from the Birmingham Day would have been signed by Martin Rath and me. Right. But that I never took any offense at that. If we were to meet uh, 10 minutes every morning, at least for Strat, which Martin Rath never found time to do. Um, and the main thing was that if an injunction was issued against us, and people that we they well, people didn't deal or not, we were gonna disobey it. Mm -hmm. And that's where the confrontation at John Drew's house mm -hmm. was. You want that I get to you not, but that makes me a difference. Yeah, that's um, let's let's hold off on that one for right. a little bit. And let's talk about those first days that um, you know the demonstration was started actually uh, April first, I believe. April, April, April first or third, whatever it was. Yeah. John Middleton and I led the first uh, wave. Okay. There were fifty-seven of us marched, and we were arrested in front of the post office mm -hmm. as the first wave of, of demonstration. And then we <clears throat> began to recruit each night. Mm -hmm. Of course, people had to work, and I'm not sure that we would ever fill up jail uh, with working people. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, a movement has a way of either crescendoing or it go, dies out. Mm -hmm. But it so happened that based on the sufferings and things that the Negroes had taken here, mm -hmm. almost anything in a push would have drive. And uh, the middle class didn't, this, this got quiet. Mm -hmm. You must remember at one time during this demonstration, uh, I think the white people tried to get Gaston and Drew and two or three others to uh, make a statement. This isn't generally known either. Mm -hmm. And I had just left Birmingham and flown to Cincinnati. And when I got there, there was a message for me from Andrew Young. Martin said, can you fly right back? Because we got to get together people to make a statement. Well, we knew they started making statements, mm -hmm. temporizing statements. It would be basically what the power structure was. Mm -hmm. So we had to fly back. I flew right back the same day. And we met in Mr. Gasson's motel, an old brick, white brick part of it. And it, we had just come out and say, you know, that actually Mr. Gass and the other, I think the statement was, if you go back and read it, we stand ready and willing, local leaders, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Martin knew that he couldn't have done it by himself, couldn't get them to tone down, except I can't. Mm -hmm. Because he had tried to use them in the, as a part of negotiation, right. and now here they are going to make statement. It would have just torn us up. Mm -hmm. So I flew, flew back in, and 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 uh, I realized it was a historical moment. I was as nice as I could be. I said, "When I, gentlemen, uh, ladies, uh, and Mr. Gaston, we we appreciate what has been done to help you give us, but now is not the time for." for the people to speak out. Y'all been making statements. Mm -hmm. And they neither got the Negroes anything. And they just feel like when y'all talk, they're not getting in the way. Mm -hmm. And if you must insist in doing it, then we have to walk out your place, just like we do the white folks. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just, a, and it, it was that stop. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. that isn't generally known. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to reflect on anybody, but, mm -hmm. But I had to come back. Mm -hmm. So this shows you whether or not I was important in the movement. Right. 
Uh, and you left Birmingham in 61. Why did you leave in 61? To move to Cincinnati. Well, the folk up there insisted the Lord had told him to call me. It was economic, anything else. Mm -hmm. I was never going to get a larger church here that they pay me what I needed. Mm -hmm. My children were getting up to school. My wife wasn't going to get a job in Alabama. Mm -hmm. See? And uh, it wasn't just for the money. Uh, I could have stayed, but at, because my local movement, this is no need. They wanted to supplement. My Saturday at Beth Bethel. Mm -hmm. But I did not feel as if I should let them supplement because I was more with them about what I say and do. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, I understood that if I was independent, I could give the same type of leadership, unfettered and unhindered by uh, anything that. Somebody else may be hooked onto the power structure might want to do. Mm -hmm. So, and then up there I had the problem of, uh, not a problem, they wanted me. I told them I didn't think the Lord told me to come up there, so I wasn't coming. This is a long story myself. Mm -hmm. But to make it short, I, I went up there, and I think we talked yesterday about Lamar Weaver had me come up there, right? Yeah. Well, we really didn't mention it. Well, well, I don't know where you want to get into all of it, but they said they had to agree. Because I told them, you all want my history, but you, you get the man. I was a man in the South. I suffered in the South. And uh, my history is what you want. You get the man, and I'll be the pastor. And, of course, they wanted they they. They didn't understand the kind of person I was even then. People vote things, you know, think they do. And 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 they when when they finally called me, I got rid of a lane to drive there to tell them no. And they voted themselves a three month period for me to reconsider. And it was during that time that uh, things happened, you know, you can't you can never know. And I hadn't thought about going up there. And even Reverend Ware, who had was sort of at odds with me, I was preaching out here on church, I believe it was Reverend Freeman Church on the side of a hill up in Fountain Heights somewhere over there. Mm -hmm. Because the media had read at my church the year before, so I had to bring the introductory service. Mm -hmm. And I remember preaching, and it was such a after they had called me, I guess the fire was on me or something. And uh, <coughs> it was amazing when I preached, most of the people were outside shouting and so forth. So Reverend Ware well, said to me, this sticks out of my mind, he said, Reverend, he said, an unusual thing happened here today. He said, now the Lord works sometimes different from what we think. He said, now you, your mind says, so you and I have different um, <coughs> different on the project. I have uh, been anti-you, but I just differ for him. And I really didn't want to have one to talk to him. He had not been, I just listened. He said, but the Lord may be trying to say something to you. The Lord may want you to go up to you. <coughs> he said, you think you have to be here in this all the time. He said, this is your heart. He said, I understand how you feel. He said, but what happened today is a, a manifestation. God is moving in your life. He said, and, and, and you must realize it's God's work, too. He said, so you pray with me. He said, I'm not telling you what to do. He said, the Lord <coughs> may want you to go up there. I had even considered no more than wall, you know, but I told them, you know, my answer is no, call somebody else. And I hadn't thought about it. And that that thing that day got to it. And so, and then I began going home. And it wasn't where that caused me to think about it. it incidentally, it's what comes into my mind. That I know that it has to be, it becomes so in a way that you know that it has to be God. And I was sleeping one night and, and uh, just like me, I was going to a red church across the river 
but they were so tied to Birmingham till it was all one thing. And I began thinking, well, if I can go and get be independent in my own what I make without uh, looking to my board to to to, to uh, sustain me, because I couldn't I couldn't uh, be independent of them taking orders from them about what I could or could not do. They have a right to say, you know. And then I went up there and I finally told them, this takes some time, but I'm, I'm just saying, the final was that I said to them, now, you all think you want me, you don't really need me, but if I come, I have to be the man here that I was anywhere else. And you have to agree to my thing. So they agree not to interfere with my going at all. Mm-hmm. Although I never spent that money to come to, to do anything. Uh, not to interfere and, and to support me in my going and church. So that, and it worked out that I spent more time here even being a pastor. Yeah. So I told my I said, and you have to be glad when you see me and pray for me when I'm gone. Because the world is my pulpit. And if it come down to a choice of my having the pulpit to preach in and my standing for what's right, then the pulpit goes here. So they have never interfered to this day. Now, I have had a right wing attack up there, which you don't need to talk about. I've been into it in so many that church there as well. And the church I have now came out of that. That's why I'm in church there. They sustain the truth. And that's why I'm there this long. What role did the law we were playing on this? None. I was disappointed. And even when I went to Cincinnati, I didn't have any closure for the law we were playing The, um, was he living in Cincinnati at the time? Yeah, one time he was living in Cincinnati. When you first When I first went there. But I didn't, we never kept any contact. That was one of my disappointments. But uh, you know, he, I was called him last week, wishing he always wishes me well. I wish him well. But I was disappointed in, in, in that we didn't get close. I was hoping we could establish that relationship because, you know, even in Cincinnati, I started leading fights and challenging. Uh, city council did something I didn't think I'd call a mass meeting at my church and get a resolution mm-hmm. and be in the street. Mm-hmm. And I wanted Lamar, who was here, you know, to have been, and he could have really become front page, but I couldn't find him. Mm. At some point, did he become a member of the church? No. Did he join the church? No. Yeah. No. No. And when he left, I didn't know he left. Mm. I don't think I spoke to Lamar after. He met me that, that night when I went up to preach. Mm-hmm. That Sunday I went up to preach. He and the lady met me at the stage. Mm-hmm. I don't really remember speaking to him up there. Mm-hmm. After, I told him in Atlanta a number of times. Yeah. Why did he meet you at the station? Because he knew you from here? From here. Mm-hmm. And he wanted me to speak at Revelation. I guess he thought it'd be nice if he'd come up to the big and I wasn't looking for any church. I don't know any church that was dearer to my heart than Bethel Baptist Church. Mm-hmm. You know. So was that a hard decision to make for you and the family to leave everyone at that point? <clears throat> well, I had some internal uh, problems in my family, uh, not not destructible. And and I thought that my wife had begun to uh it didn't it didn't really become overt until she got up there. You know, sometimes you can uh, become envious of a person's status. I've always been a popular individual out front. Men and women. From the time I began preaching in Mobile, I took people go out of the way to make open for me. But we never all, my wife and I, you wouldn't believe this, and never all over a man or woman. Nothing like that. But it's just things that happen that we, just, we grew not not apart. Now I realized though that a large part of it was my own rugged uh, individualistic style and, and going and done. She knew I was going to do what I felt like I did. 
But I always reported them as a family. And when I could, I could be home and so forth. And and then she got a job teaching in the back of her mind that left home. And I really didn't want to 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 uh she had a job teaching here. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. I really didn't want to go to Cincinnati, take her to Cincinnati because the, the problem had begun evidence a little bit itself and then here. And uh so during the time that I was trying to agonize on whether to go, um, one day we were we went to the house and she said she said to me, she had never Fred mentioned it before. She said, Fred, let's go to Cincinnati. I said, Well, you know, I told you that I would never want to get into another church with you. I think you just should I thought, I don't think I should go for that reason. Uh, and I don't want to have a truck because see, here my wife was going to, I sent her back to Montgomery to school. She didn't want to take the fence in the train. And when she would come home, it would just be so much problems until I could hardly, all Saturday night I could hardly, and I'm not saying this to uh, do anything. She's the mother of my children. And she stuck with me back in those days. But people somehow never get apart. And I said, I, I promise they don't do to your popularity. The doctor said to me, and only once, he said, Your wife is fighting your image. That's a problem. I can't do nothing with it. It's a psychological problem. And I heard her tell somebody she was playing a role model. My wife never played a role model. You just do your job. But I, I don't want to get into it. But I'm saying that I, here, before I left, we had, I had helped her to finish school and took all I could do. But I wasn't making $75 a week, paying her aunt to keep the kids. And so she said to me, let's, let's go to Cincinnati. And I said, well, I told you I would never be in another church where I'd have to have problems with you. We have the augmentations and so forth. It wasn't serious, but it was just enough to. Uh, so she said, Well, let's get a new start. I think that indirectly, and I have to be honest, because we're all human, part of that helped to invade with my mind and consider what I was doing. Because she needed to leave right now, you know. And uh, of course, when we got into Cincinnati, she became a Told another individual, she got a job teaching. Sometimes I would see her in the morning and not again to tell them at night. You know, she's doing business things and other things. But uh, that that weighed a little bit in the way because I always believe in keeping the family together. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in a man <clears throat> run off for second his family, and then I don't basically believe in divorce unless it just must happen. So I'm giving you an intimate thing because I think you have to be honest about it. Everybody face it. Nowadays when, when divorce is so prevalent and all, you really hate to think about these things. And we all have our problems. We have to face them as best we can. But I do think in any situation, people ought to try to um, they ought to try to see what God wants in their lives in this situation. And then feel satisfied that whatever the result is, if you follow God, it's going to come out all right. But that's uh, my goal. Your children at that time were early high schools? Fred Jr. was, Fred Jr. was uh, 16 and up. Net. They were, right. yeah. And um, yeah, if Jr. one finished high school, the other finished high school, he had probably two girls. Okay. So they started in UC. And uh, here again, just to show you some problem I have, I'm out civil writing, you know. But they finished yeah. high school then, and now you had moved off to Cincinnati, or you the same year I moved. So they started in UC, two girls. Okay. Because uh, they didn't go to high school up there, I don't recall. But this problem, just go back to the wife thing. She was so concerned about them being free to, 
You know, you let kids do everything and go and don't get their lesson, no study. So you see, at one time, was uh, expelling three of my kids for not maintaining their nerves, and all of my kids, so none of them are dumb. And I didn't even know it. So we go to, uh, you see, and I'm going on there, you know, and dig them. So here I am fighting for human rights, blah, 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 and you put my kids out of school. And this professor said to me, he said, Reverend, he said, you know, I'm not a segregationist, and I realize how you feel. He said, he said, it's such as, go get the file. Oh, oh show my children. He had a file that thick. And he had left there where he had written me, telling me he didn't they were failing and was going to have to be put out to my wife. All that kept that from me. Mm -hmm. So you never knew. Yeah. Long was ever born all that long. Yeah. It was really something. Well, she, uh, they're in college now, so she, the boy wanted to get married. And she, the, the, the first black jury in St. Had I endorsed him in the paper, so he got elected at 70,000 votes. On the Cincinnati, as much racist as it's still. And uh, so she ha his wife had to be a principal, and so she got a good job. And and you become set in your way. And instead of her insisting on the kids getting their lesson, she takes him out of school and sends him to Knoxville College. I know anything about it. So he down there and he failed down there. You didn't know that sound was being transferred? No, 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 no. So the the the, the, the man down there, whatever the examiner. Bush or whatever it was, he called me talking. He said, Well, Reverend, you might want to come because his heart is getting married and he's failing his grades. He's not going to do any better down here. So I, so he comes back home without my knowing anything about my wife had arranged with this principal, who then, principal, he's a judge, they knew all of the white people. I didn't know any of them. They had an arranged for him to go to Denver. They're going to pay some scholarship in Denver for him. And my wife just offhand one day said, no, I'm going to scholarship him. I said, no, no, no. If he can't make it at UC, which is one of the best schools in the country, he won't make it anyway. And then I called Mrs. Lovelace. I said, Miss Lovelace, I, I'm a little bit surprised that the relationship you had. Remember one time, and I don't want to get into all this, but her husband, the Republican Party, controlled this net. Mm -hmm. okay. And he couldn't fire his bailiff for, for doing the favor in his, his name for that. And I went down with the preacher there and threatened, and, and, and threatened to shake up the city. So I'd be glad to go to jail and say the, the party system is running the judicial. Mm -hmm. That was her husband. And I was sitting outside in the hall when they were talking to him like you have some kids sitting there talking on the bank. And I told him, I said, Mr. Barnes, public contempt. I said, now, he said, well, no, no, brother, we will move the bailiff. Party will move the bailiff. Judge can't find on bailiff. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, uh, Mr. Barnes, I know how people do. I said, but I tell you what. If, if there's any more interference with him as a judge, I come down and sit in the middle of the street and get arrested so I can put in the paper. Paper don't hear what I'm saying. Republican Party. I'll give you my hand. Well, now, so his wife, you know, knows all about this. I say his job. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, I can't imagine with all that we've been through that you would uh, make a to send my son off. So he was down in Knoxville. I knew anything about that. She said, Reverend, you mean to tell me? I said, now you're going to send him to uh, Denver? She said, Miss Shelburne told me that you all were together. And uh, she was shocked, of course. Uh, but I didn't let him go. Uh, these are just problems. You always have internal problems. You know, you can have problems outside and inside, but you have to do what you think is basically right. 
So if we knew that <clears throat> as the movement progressed, you had already organized Birmingham with the with the Alabama Christian movement. Yeah. So by 62, when you invited SCLC to come into Birmingham, uh, why did you think that this was the time? Well, it's simple. You must remember that for seven years, and I hope Birmingham people learned it, for seven years before we invited SCLC, we had won all of the legal victories. Mm -hmm. We had tested everything and won, Bob Cates and all. But there were period victories. Mm -hmm. They closed the library, they closed the, and they closed the parks. So that showed what it was in the So my thought was that, and I didn't think that Dr. King himself was going to win the battle. I thought that Dr. King and, and, and and all our influence together was what Birmingham could do based on what the strength of the movement and, and, and crescendoing and people coming from the outside. See, we planned to invite people from the outside. And when we went to jail for violating the injunction, we had a statement ready to ask people to come in and flood the streets. Uh, Doctor, I was always aware that you have to uh, look out for the worst. And if you get prepared for the worst, you do all right. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I never worried about things of what was going to happen to me, because I always had figured what the worst would come out of. Uh, SCLC needed Birmingham. Mm -hmm. SCLC needed to resurrect itself and to prove that we can uh, persuade people to challenge in their own right. You must remember that SCLC didn't make movements. SCLC only helped to facilitate. And by all of our assemblies, you must remember that in all of the places we went, Martin couldn't be there all the time, not around, but our assemblies, I would go in and Martin would go in and rap, like in Memphis, when he was killed, I would go in that next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. See, to encourage people and to keep things going. Well, it just so happened here, that you had one of the symbols of the movement on which the movement depended at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, it wasn't a thing that anybody could come in here and run over I me mean, or change things, even if they didn't like it. There were instances, and I don't talk about it, where they were trying, it, it appeared as they were trying to undercut my leadership. And some people thought that, but I, I believe <coughs> a lot of the things that we were doing. Mm -hmm. And maybe there are a few things I would do differently at the moment, but that's that's not. Uh, I think that you do what you feel you should do at that time, and that's it. Uh, I've been asked why was it that uh, I didn't go when the Nobel Peace Prize when the peace was given for what happened in Birmingham, mm -hmm. and Dr. King never asked me, and I never asked him. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the press would say, well, he was doing his thing. I said, well, you know, I'm satisfied to have, have moved us further from where we were. Mm -hmm. That I wasn't seeking to go. And don't today. Yeah. yeah. Um, God be good. Um, in those early days of that time, uh, of the 63 demonstration, mm -hmm. uh, after the first arrest, yeah. the meetings there, the nightly meetings, started to, to grow. But then there was a period mm -hmm. where um, it appeared that uh, people had gotten rather afraid to lose jobs. And, and, and then there was this, this idea of, of bringing the children into the into the home. Well, I think that we had, it was a general discussion at one time that, that really everybody should be fighting for free. We hadn't specifically uh, thought about the children. Mm -hmm. It was our need that the children were brought up as soldiers. Right. Uh, our mm -hmm. idea is that we ought to teach everybody freedom and so forth. And uh, we, we were not 
increasingly jail people like we wanted to. And, and some of the people who had been in jail, twice even adults, couldn't keep going back and keep a job. Right? See? And uh, so we had been taught, we'd been kicked around, and James Bevel pushed the idea further. And how he got it all was to convince uh, uh, Y.T. Walker and myself. Well, what we basically agreed upon was going to be it anyway. Mm -hmm. See, and 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 my position was that young people could be no better soldiers anywhere and at any time than understanding what freedom was and fighting for freedom. And of course, uh, when we had meeting and talked with, with King about it, he had some basic reluctance, but King also knew that we would never feel a day, and if we did, it would be over some kind of a miracle. And uh, so Wyatt and I had tacitly given Bevel the idea of beginning to, and Orange and others, to, to to feel the students out because the children were coming to the master. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a problem for us had to go out and persuade them. Yeah, they were already there. Yeah, the children, we, we had so many young folk. Yeah. And I began focusing my speeches on, on children. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things uh, was that what the parents need is to set the example for their children, but the children are supposed to sustain the parents. And the kids wanted to do it. it. To them, it was a challenge. But then I think one of the lessons that all students, white and black, ought to be ought to be mandatory is the basic discipline of the movement, because children now have so many lax lax situations and leverages that they need to be. So when I miss, you need to learn this along with that mm -hmm. so that you can balance in your thinking. That young people, even children, have to win this battle. Without them, we wouldn't have won. Mm -hmm. See, there was one time we had there three thousand, over 3,000 people in there. And uh, Bert Marshall, I don't know where you want to get into this now, we were right at the heights of the movement, and I went downtown and I saw the policeman was so frustrated. He turned around from the middle of the street and he would ask me, Well, how many more you got? I said, Well, we got about 4,000 more. <laughs> and I remember Arthur Haynes, this change of government thing, he was down there. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, You're powerless and a, pow a powerful man in a powerless situation. Mm -hmm. We had downtown this. Just to steal mm -hmm. civil disobedience. Uh, and I said, tomorrow, all we've got to do is to hold them mm -hmm. three more days. Mm -hmm. Now, it was in the height of this period that you were struck to file. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, 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 the this uh, so called uh, negotiating committee, mm -hmm. they had begun to temporize. You know, and Bert Marshall was talking, and I don't know what Bert was saying, being honest with you. Uh, and when I was struck with the fire hole, here again, you see, uh, let's don't try to figure life without the God of life. I was so tense. And you must remember, I wasn't out there challenging them. I had been helping to get the kids out of the street, mm -hmm. back into the building, so we could talk to them that you don't need to challenge and tempt Trump the police. And Doc, give us a little like, what was that? How was that transpired? How did that evolve? This whole situation of your being where you were at the time and what were the children doing? That? Okay. This was, uh, I don't know what day it was of the South Hope, mm -hmm. seven, you know, it was seven. A.G. Gaffin said so he looked out his office and saw so children walking down the street. But I had been in a demonstration and I had to get behind a tree and, and, the, and the hole was 75 feet away, not bark off that street. Everybody, I couldn't look out. I had, 
I had had to get behind Peter to avoid the water. This is not when I'm struck, but I had to. We had to uh, uh, try to be sure that even as the young people were being hit struck with the hole, that there were cases of severe disabilities. We had that was our responsibility, mine, I feel, mm -hmm. as well as others. And on this day, this was the second day when they, the kids were talking to me. Uh, I, I had come around from over on Fifth Avenue, and and we got all the kids out of the park and bailed all of us. And I had come around and came on this sidewalk. The fight, the tripod where they were putting the water was right between Martin's statue and that. Mm -hmm. And so I passed by them just like you and I talked. They, they recognized me. We were friends, basically. Mm -hmm. And as you would have it, uh, so I went on across the street, never looking back, until uh, I went to go down the steps. And now, uh, you know how far it is from going down the steps and 16 feet and just across the street. Mm -hmm. One of the five had said to the other, as I was on the top, let's put some water on the river. I could hear it like you and I talk. Right. It's unusual, it had to be God. Mm -hmm. And I turned, and they had already turned the water up and the water was being given in the ark on me. And I just put my hand before my face, and, before, before my face, and I was slammed against that wall. As my faith would have been disfigured today. And I slammed against the wall, and the, wall, the water came on out. I, my breath, I had trouble getting my breath and, and all that, that. And, uh, and I just found a lady. I was conscious. I didn't get unconscious, but I was slammed against the wall. And uh, I felt the uh, water still pushing on me once I was there. And I guess then they turned up, but I just couldn't do anything but lay there. And then I heard somebody say, hey, this wrong show And I could hear people screaming. And, and I uh, was taken up and taken out the whole assembly. At that time, I had, I had, I had been so worked up that I was concerned that Martin and Rabbi weren't communicating like we were. Mm -hmm. and, and here we need to be together, whatever happened, because I knew that we had to keep the pressure on. But these, uh, the, the uh, negotiating committee had begun trying to give the merchants a way out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so I went to the hospital. The doctor, the first thing he did, give me a hypo. He wanted to knock me out. He said, you're just so hyper. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, but he didn't knock me out. And later on during that night, he came in. He said, now you, and I had it during the struggle, the bell of a kind of a tension back. And he gave me another one during that night. But I just wouldn't give in. I was aware that I had to be back here. I don't know for what, and I don't know why, but I just didn't just go out. Mm -hmm. So, the modern rap didn't come. This was one thing that I was real disturbed about, to see about me at all. And uh, the next morning, when uh, Reverend God and my wife came out, the doctor told him this. He said, now, his heart is over there. He's not going to rest there. I've given him two hot folks. Take him home back over there, and if he can be, he rest better at the motel in the midst of what's going on, because that's where his mind is. <clears throat> I said, you're right. Mm -hmm. They brought me to Gaston Motel, on that wing on that side, on room 24, whatever it was. And I had not tucking me in the bed. And uh, and I had been in the bed 10 minutes before Andrew Young comes over and knocks on the door. Martin wants you out of John Drew's house, which upset me very much. <clears throat> and he didn't he didn't tell me. I said, well, what, what do I need to do? He said, well, no, come on, it's, it's urgent. You got to go. So I get up and go. 
always in modern rapture and leave me. I go, whatever I feel. Mm -hmm. And I guess we better just set in mind. Drew's house, you, it's a, what is it, stage, one, two, stage level. Mm -hmm. You walk in, you step down into, right. and way over there, you step up. Mm -hmm. In this room was, uh, see, Dean and Drew was sitting way over the steps over there on the floor. Martin was <clears throat> looking out of the windows over the wood with his hand in his back pocket. That's where he always stood when he was really deep in the truck. Mm -hmm. He wasn't saying anything. But Marshall was sitting by the middle of the room. Ralph was a little bit further. Dolan and some others. I guess it was Dolan. I don't know that name. And uh, I am very incensed, to be honest with you. So I stepped down. I didn't know I was that, that weak until I sat in the chair and dropped. And I said, Martin, why is it that I need? What are, what, why is it I have to get up out of my sick bed and come out to John Drew's house? So he didn't answer me. I said, well, no. I asked you, why must I get up out of my sick bed and come to John Drew's house? Without looking around, he said, well, Fred, we got to call the demonstrations of your back pain. And I realized the pressure that was on me, you know, worldwide. Oh. Highest government, benevolence. Mm -hmm. I felt sorry for them, but I was mad as hell too. That they couldn't come inside and talk to me and see what was what. Especially, they didn't have to the whole community. Uh, he said, we got to call them. I said, say that again. He said, we got to call I said, I thought over here we were not going to call a demonstration. I said, uh, Martin, what, what in the world is happening? I said, you don't mean to tell me we got there 4,000 people in jail on my word and your word. And we're going to do, I said, you know, this is a said, this is you, you get folk in trouble. Now, Fred, I don't, I said, your own, I don't think you understand. I said, your own brother says it about it. I said, but that ain't, that ain't the point. We ain't calling nothing up. We ain't calling a damn thing up. Actually, what I said. Mm -hmm. So Dean and Drew was sitting way over on the other side, which talked to me Oh, I ain't want to know why we can't call it off. And I was angry. I said, well, you can't call nothing off or you ain't, ain't didn't call nothing off. So I didn't come on and talk with you, she said no more. <laughs> well, that is fact in the fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, no, we don't call anything off. And I tried to get up and I realized how weak I was. I was getting angry about the moment. And uh, uh, Ralph was was uh, beyond Brick Mark. Brick was the closest to me. Maybe about further from here that, that night stand. Ralph was a little bit further between Brick and Martin and a couple other people there. So Ralph said, well, now Fred, you and I went to school again to dinner. And we were friends, they were friends. And I get on my knee, but while he was talking, he was coming on his knees and wind up between my knees. Mm -hmm. And we can read. I said, Ralph, get off your damn knee. You get on your bed. Don't even know that we ain't called nothing up. So he just broke the truck around and went back. I said, we're not calling anything up. Well, they had arranged. Now, listen, all of this now, and I'm running back. That the president was gonna make a joint statement in Washington, Martin was gonna make a joint TV statement in Birmingham, mm -hmm. called it all. Mm -hmm. Already decided. Yeah. yeah, and so somebody said, Well, what about the president? Uh, president? I said, Oh, you got a press conference. I said, I'll tell you what you do, go ahead and do it. I said, I'm gonna go back and get my sick bed, and when I see you all have called it all, then I'm with what little strength I got, I'm gonna get back out and meet them. Thousand kids out of the street, and you'd be dead. I said, Martin, you'd be Mr. SHIT instead of Mr. B. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, So the president got, I said, Y'all go ahead. And I tried to get up and cook and got angry, you know. Mm -hmm. So then uh, I believe it was Nolan, or Nolan, when I went, Dean had a little room to open here, and some phone line there. Mm -hmm. Robert Kennedy always, because I remember I told you yesterday, he was the one, the point man, he keeps yeah, up with right. what's going on. Right. So he called during that time. Mm -hmm. 
Why are you there? See, they realized that if they had called at all without me, then I call back on everybody be messed up. I think so. Uh, he called, and, and, and this man was trying to tell him the frail one. Mark Bobby didn't understand the word. Mm -hmm. So he had to say it a little loud, the frail one. <laughs> and I heard him. I said, I guess you're talking to the president of his brother. I said, tell him I'm free, but not that damn free. We ain't calling nothing off. <laughs> <laughs> you defied the president of the, the United States. United States. I said, I understand that the president nor his brother live down here. And people have confidence in me and Martin through me. And these people go to jail and have, and we just ain't calling nothing off. And then I really got up out because I was going anyway. And then Bud Marshall said, I'm still sitting out. And he made this statement. Now, you figure out what kind of statement this is. He said, but I have made promises to these people. Mm -hmm. And I looked straight at him. I said, but any promise you made that I didn't agree with is not a promise. I said, let's go. I said, now, hell, y'all carry it on and let's go. And so I'm getting up walking out. My wife and uh, Reverend Gardner uh, got on the mound because I couldn't get up myself. Mm -hmm. And as I turned around, Bud said these words to me. Don't worry, Fred. They're going to agree to you on the matter. Mm -hmm. And I suppose I had him at that yeah. Yeah. He I said, see. don't worry. They're gonna, and they went back at the same man. And I agreed. Mm -hmm. So that would have actually changed the the whole movement. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have, if, if we had ever stopped short of an agreement, mm -hmm. but imagine to say we didn't agree to anything, SCLC would have been dead, the movement for the breakthrough as close as we were. Mm -hmm. And we done, I, I knew we had to be, uh, you know, so many little things you need to get on tape, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, we must be making progress when I go before Judge Brown, one who died on the, and Bull wouldn't have joined the court, but this was one, two, three days before that. And I'm going before him on my sentence, and he said to me, I don't know what he called me, Mr. Shuttleworth, for a change. I regret to inform you that because of the overcrowded conditions at the jail, I cannot sentence you this morning. I said, Your Honor, we're making progress. And so I sat in the white section. He's trying to, now y'all supposed to sit where you're supposed to sit. I'm sitting right over there looking, because I know you couldn't put me in jail. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, we won. Mm -hmm. But what would, what would this to that would have been? Mm -hmm. And you can know, or anybody can know, King that would have an act of heart there we're not wanting to live in. But it took that. And, uh, I gave this interview to Howard Raines because I want I didn't want history to pass without us. And, and I have never sought to demean any man's name. Certainly not Martin. I think he was the man that was spoken for the hour and he evolved that. And I don't know whether we uh, had the same idea, but at least we were caught up together in the idea of fighting segregation, lifting the burden of people into some degree at least, at least that he communicated to me. That we were, uh, we could talk together and seemingly have the same mind. So I had no choice with him. I, I never, press have asked me, uh, Martin was doing this thing, he had a larger purpose, but my purpose was to overthrow segregation. First here, then there, and everywhere. And so, as long as Martin could do that without uh, abusing the people and so forth, so I'm, ha so I'm happy of the King Holiday. I'm happy and supported and do support. And I hate for anybody to um, say anything demeaning of Martin. Were you in town the night of the bombing of uh, A.D. King Holiday at the motel? No, I had gone uh, back to Cincinnati, but I think I came back the next day. So, no, I wasn't here. No. Um, <clears throat> that was a night that it appeared that black folk 
that decided they were gonna, you know, that was gonna be wasn't gonna be any nonviolence that night. And and that created somewhat of a difficulty for the movement leaders. Yeah, especially due to the fact that you're trying to keep people here, Al Lingo and others, and the state uh, governor was uh, had his troopers in and so forth. And it's just amazing that, that it was contained. But I think the threat of Kennedy federalizing the guard mm -hmm. was what kept it from going as further than it did. See, the president was alert that if, for instance, if, for instance, we didn't get a clear victory out of it, whatever else happened, and we were going to continue saying, and they're going to start beating us up, he would have to federalize the guard. Mm -hmm. And we were of a mind, I was. Mm -hmm. And if it took the federal guard, see, we had already known what the limited martial law in Montgomery did, didn't mm -hmm. fulfill the purpose. Martin was disappointed, because mm -hmm. he now, and federal troops are on the way when he finally was limited martial, mm -hmm. martial law. Kennedy was trying to get something that the uh, hero yeah. to go. And I admire him. I, I have said that if it had not been for the Kennedys in the White House and the Kings, me and Ralph, me and others, and all other people in the streets, America would still be a jungle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After that, I guess, like the, that May, what then was your relationship to, uh, to Birmingham? Because that, I guess there were still demonstrations eventually. Yeah. Uh, how often did you come back then? I was back, uh, see, I was back in Birmingham to 65. Mm -hmm. I was regularly back into back supporting the students, supporting it. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to resign in 65. Mm -hmm. That's when they gave, my movie gave me this, this is your life thing. I have some of the pictures I'll show you mm -hmm. when you want to talk about archives and so forth. Right. Uh, in 65. But I kept charge of the movement until 69. Now from 65, from 66 until 69, I didn't come as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, because uh, it was good to me that the students were doing some things, and whenever I would need, whenever anything uh, of any consequence was going on, I was right back, and I was always available. You know, for instance, if somebody was receiving a back set or something, I'd come stand right in the gap, because I was always ready to go to jail. Jail to me was, was one way of getting things done, because as long as I'm in jail, the press got to be there, then you can say something, then you can push. I know this. And uh, and I think at this time they <clears throat> the power structure was trying to avoid saying, you know, to do just enough. Really, the segregation and and the system now does only what it has to. No more. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change mm -hmm. much. It's just enough to keep down problems, mm -hmm. and only that when it has to. Which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Which goes back to say, my friend, that we're a long way from doing God's will a will that said, let justice roll down like water and righteousness to my stream. Everybody says that. Mm -hmm. But we are satisfied that justice only trickles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The trickling of justice. Yeah, the trickling of justice. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Well, we just Take a break here. All right. All right. It should be as important as change of government. You can ask that. Huh. Okay. Yeah. At the time that um, Birmingham was going through uh, this effort to change the government from uh, commission formal government to the city council or mayor form. Some things were happening as far as the movement was concerned. Can you sort of elaborate on, on some of the highlights of things that were happening at that point? Well, the movement actually was was uh, holding breath uh, in abeyance uh, in hopes, just like everybody else was, that the type of where we have government could be changed, commissioned for, mm -hmm. which had not served uh, adequately anyway. 
and it was too personalized in people like Bull Connor, you know, so forth. So that um, we were hopeful that the citizens uh, could, could elect the officials in Congress and without intimidation and so forth. Well, you know, for the demonstration, Connor was, uh, was concerned about keeping, all his concern was, was keeping office. Uh -huh. And it just so happened that I was, somebody was driving me to the airport and I happened to hear, and this was the week before they left, as I recall, not over two weeks. Uh, and I happened to hear a radio report that Mr. Connor had said that the white people in Birmingham better wake up because Shuttleworth and them Negroes are, are planning to tap the town, something. And better elect him so he could be they could be sure being safe, keeping safe and so forth. And all of a sudden it dawned on me that Mr. Connor was going to stage something and put it on the movement to get the white people upset. And had that been had that been done, all of what Dave Mann and all the rest of the people who were trying to change the method of government would have failed. Because the majority of the white would have been angry at movement demonstration. And I realized this. I understood it clearly in a moment. When I was going to the airport, I didn't have time to call Lola Hendricks or nobody else at the airport, the plane was to take off. So on the plane, I just wrote out a statement. And when I hit the ground in Atlanta, between the change of plane, I called Lola Hendricks and read to her word for word. I said, the Alabama Christian movement, as I recall now, is desirous that the citizens of Birmingham in a calm and undisturbed atmosphere would take time to choose their officials, the people they want to lead them. Therefore, the Alabama Christian movement will plan no activities for this period of election and will not participate in any plan by anybody else. Yeah. Which means that it had there been demonstrations, I had foreclosed any of them for ourselves or anybody else. So we couldn't put that on the movement. We couldn't put the book. Uh, Mr. Connor had planned to put it on the movement. And I don't think many of the citizens of this country, of this city, know that right now. But uh, at any rate, I said to her, I said, now get this to all three of the television statements, stations and uh, also to the radio station at once. And I understand that within an hour, she had gotten people and had taken it to every one of them because I called back later on. He said all of them, and they had they were glad to get it. Because they realized it was important to the election that to know that the movement was not planning it. And they had already realized that this other thing was put out before that we had planned it. But for me saying there wouldn't be any. No, I would participate in it. And that then I'm sure that had that not been done, Mr. Connor would have won the election. And the citizens right now of this city don't know that had that happened, they the change of government would not have happened. You also had the opportunity to uh, serve as, as your lawyer at one point, and you <laughs> had Bull Connor on, on the staff. Yeah, you must remember that, uh, as I was telling you about the uh, situation where Chief Knox and the fire department and all the people, police went out on, but we would be strong in the movement. But this was simply a method of harassing, uh, what I call harassing the harassers, and giving the people to show that you can have a voice. And I knew that lawyers have a particular power where you can summon to penal people. And so this was thought out by uh, me and Lynn Holt, who came in and helped us file a lot of suits, and then we were having difficulties with lawyers. Although I didn't have anything against lawyers, just didn't have money enough to do all that. Lynn Holt gave him his time. Lynn Holt 
could type up a suit between him and Atlanta Airport. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd buy it. Pro say. You fire. That's a pulp, yeah. yeah. And Jerry Coons understood it. And so uh but but this suit was heard before Seaborn Lynn. Seaborn mm -hmm. H. Lynn, Jared Lynn, the segregationist in it, and, and they always call him their judge. And in that star, which is the Klan paper, they had Lynn listed as the Klansman judge. Mm -hmm. So I knew uh, at first whether we won or not, it didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. But Lynn and I suggested that it would be a psychological thing. A list of people just to know that Bull Connor, as powerful as he was, can be subpoenaed on the phone, on, on the stand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would be just interrogated. interrogated. Mm -hmm. and so he had been fair fishing out some trouble, I think, some some questions. I think you have some of them there. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, like I did night, if I would have asked him much more pointed questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I knew we weren't going to win, and Lynn knew that too. In fact, Jerry Lynn told us. Practically, I think, before we even uh, started. But it was, and as soon as the, the three committees said, well, I'm going to rule against you, so I think he ruled something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we had him on, and this did a lot of, uh, this did a lot of psychological lifting to the mm -hmm. people to know that we could have Bull Connor on the Were people in the courtroom that day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was full. And he had to be there, and he had to wait till I called him. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy Morgan also was there. Mm -hmm. That must have been quite a triumphant day, psychologically. Oh, you should have just, you should read the movement at night, and the next, that week, it was just, that was all that was talked about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Bull, Bull felt humiliated, but what did it make? Yeah. Right. Your activities after Birmingham, after like 65 or so, you spent most of the time there in Cincinnati. Tell me about what, what was happening in Cincinnati. Though. Well, you, uh, you must remember I went, to, I was called to Cincinnati in 61. Right. I left in, in the early part because I left Bethel in August. I was so heavily involved. Here, I was in about 14 lawsuits then. Mm -hmm. I mean, about, I guess, about 40 altogether. they suing me and I'm suing them and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but going into Cincinnati, I was accepted as a hero. I had, uh, I mean, headlines, you know, for my going there, my whatever happened to me there. And you must remember that I was, um, on the board of Southern Conference Education Fund. And then I accepted the presidency of it. And Jackson Daly Lewis put out a green sheet with a black streamer, Negro pastor heads communist front. Mm -hmm. So I knew that uh, to a segregationist, anybody who believed in integration was a communist. And that about the same time as I was being called to Cincinnati. So I just Put out a statement that I was not going to enter into verbal gymnastics with people who, for a lifetime, have been just trying to hold back dem democracy and democratic action by accusing people of being communists and so forth. And I said to, an, to a segregationist, and if anybody who wants integration is a communist. I said, besides, I take the position Abraham Lincoln took that, calling a cow tail a leg or not making a leg. <laughs> and I wasn't bothered about it now. How did you get involved with the Southern Conference Education Fund? I always was fascinated with the fact that so many teachers and leaders who just believe in empathizing or sympathizing with the black men for freedom. We either harassed, driven out, or in their jobs and so forth. There's a white, 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 white people. Right. And I was always uh, moved with the fact that a few of them still live in the South. Yeah. Like the people in Montgomery, I forget the name. Durs. Durs and Virginia Durr and others. And um, 
the braids of uh, Louisville, who simply bought a house for a Negro in a white neighborhood. And they were indicted for sedition. Sabotage, edition, sedition. And Carl Brayton was called before the House on American Activities Commission Committee and uh, asked his opinion. And he told me that his, his opinion wasn't no damn business of the committee. <laughs> and I just have always uh, felt as if people like that needed to be supported. And uh, in Interestingly, you're talking about a link where the link between civil rights and civil activities, civil liberties, were sort of coordinated because when Dr. King was rising as a star, you remember, the NACP and others were real, uh, what you say, careful about what he said, and he had to be careful about what he said because his southern senators and leaders were calling everybody communist, uh -huh. uh -huh. or anybody who worked with him. Right. Well, my being uh, in the position I was, and I had the strongest affiliate, so I had equal voice with Martin than anybody else. Uh -huh. And I always had the right to say what I felt and to do what I felt. Martin knew that. And so that they needed me more than I needed them at that particular time. Uh -huh. So, uh, and Braden, I thought they were, it was raw persecution. So I was asked to serve about 15, maybe 54, 55, mm -hmm. on the board with them, Dr. Huff of West Virginia and Jim Dombrowski of New Orleans and uh, Ann and Carl Braden and oh, they were in and out. I was surprised to know mm -hmm. Bishop Love. Old Bishop Green, anybody who advocated lifting the cause of Negro, of right. whites and black working together. That's what the thing. Right. And so uh, I gladly joined to be on the board. And as I had been on the board, I noticed that they accepted my position and sort of leaned on backwards to be sure that to pay attention to what I was saying, because I was a pushy. First of all, living in Birmingham, they could give me that wholehearted support without anything. Mm -hmm. And the challenges that I made. And I had full sway. They didn't try to persuade my opinion one way or the other. And then later on, I became, but it, I won't get to this point of how the civil rights and civil liberties became. Right. I realized that, that there actually could not be civil rights unless there are civil liberties, people to think and feel and so forth. And uh, Maude and Ralph had much hesitation they had to do, but then I was always a free spirit. And, um, uh, when I was elected the president of Southern Council Education Fund, the streamer from Jackson Daily News. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I recall, I was on one of my trips going back to Cincinnati, and Bloss the Current had come from Jackson, Mississippi. He was the NACP membership town. Mm -hmm. And he had this blue streamer showing it to me. He said, Man, look at that. Negro past the heads, communist front. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Green paper with a black string. He said. So I said, I said, yeah, I know. He said, well, yeah, you get out of there as quick as you can. I said, I didn't comment on him. You also must remember that in this time, in the ACP had a lot of my cases was were handled. So he couldn't wait to get to Atlanta to call Roy Wilkins. And uh at this time, they hadn't built a new airport. They had to get off and go on the ground and one. And there were phones there. So I went in and sat down. And he was, yeah, yeah, Roy, I like the paper. It's all over the paper. Roy, yeah, he's here now. 
And I said, you talking to Roy? And I said, he said, yeah. I said, well, let me talk to Roy. Because <laughs> I know you have to take an issue here, don't you? So I went to the phone and said, hi, Roy. I was, and they had so many cats. I said, you know, my news with me now, I always ask you all, how is my neck instead of how you get my uncle? <laughs> had so many cases for me. Right. Yeah, I said, well, you, uh, I hear gloss. I said, you know, I've been asked to hear the, the Southern Cross Education Fund. Yeah, yeah, I said, and of course I understand that you'll have a lot of cases for me, and I, I will understand it if you feel like you cannot defend me. I said, because I took it and I knew what I was doing. Roy was smart. He said, oh, yeah, well, I said, anything in segregation, I said, you know, we, we opposite. <laughs> and that was never any more. That was it. Never any more hesitation. Mm -hmm. So then we had, as I recall, our convention or something in, 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 in Louisville that same year. So the conference convention. SCLC. SCLC, okay. Either board meeting or the convention. I forget which time. And Martin Luther King and Ralph, I knew I had to be straight out with them about it. And so, as I recall in Louisville that time, we were ready to have pulled and King and Abbott as we were going to come and open car. My Hayden Jackson was that was going to this, this uh, meeting. And, in, and I remember in getting on the expressway, the car we were in struck another car and kept moving. And I said to Martin, now Martin, this is not none about us. <laughs> Ma was in the front seat. Ralph was in the back seat. And Mahalia Jackson, I believe, was over there. So, as I have said to you, I always believe in facing an issue head on. I think people make a terrible mistake when you know something is amiss or something, somebody has a question that you don't address. You can do it more aggressively if you, you bring it up than you defending yourself. So I said to Dak, uh, to Mark, to, to Ralph as we were in the back, I said, Ralph, you know I'm here, I'm here then. The uh, Southern Conference Education Fund. Yeah, I heard that. You get out of there as quick as you can. I said, well, I didn't get in to get out of there. I said, in fact, uh, I'm uh, coming up now to resign. I knew they couldn't be wrong with that. And I quit talking to him. I said, oh, yeah, Martin. I said, you know, I accepted the presidency of uh, Southern Council Education Fund. Yeah, I heard it. I said, and I was uh, coming up so I could resign because I don't want to embarrass you. He said, oh, no, friend, nothing like that. No, we are together. I said, well, that's fine. Because I want you to know that. And I was just telling Ralph that I didn't get in to get out of there. And I think we've got to, got to support each other. People who stand up for their rights and are harassed, they harassed us the same way. The only difference we're black. Well, I said, oh, no. We, 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 are, we are all together. I said, well, I just wanted to know. And I didn't want you to know. I, I'm prepared to resign if you think I should. Because I don't want to embarrass that CLC. But you see, before that, I had already, with Ann and Carl, we had started sending joint statements to the President of the United States. Right. And they had, uh, they, Ann and them knew all of these auxiliaries were fighting grassroots organizations. Martin had a big hesitation of what he had to sign. But with my being on him, <laughs> that sort of broke the ice. Right. Right. See, and you take, uh, really, the Greenberg case, the one that killed those people. Mm -hmm. Martin is dead now, and Joe Lowry was the president. And and uh, I took the position that the Klan had no right to sort of stop other folks. And somebody in the office told me that Joe had said I should have made that statement. I said, well, Martin Luther King would agree that the Klan has a right to deny other people leadership. So I'm going to and I'm going. That made Joe had to come. You see. So that I linked, it was through me that we were able, not me alone, but we were able to link civil rights on civil liberty. Mm -hmm. And of interest to Birmingham people is, you must remember that uh, Ann and Carl Brayton, I gave them the right to come into Birmingham and speak at the Black Men when Bull Connor was threatening to arrest them. Mm -hmm. And I never will forget, oh, at New Pilgrim Baptist Church, I had Ann Brayton to come in and speak, and the house was packed. And I said, now, 
Uh, Bull Connor thinks he's running back man, but somebody get a picture of this because tell Bull I'm kissing a white woman. I kiss her right in front of all the old. <laughs> they had detectives in the meeting, of course. Mm -hmm. um, these were done so people could see that you can really stand up and be men and women without it. We had to fight for black and white people working together. And that's what these in Birmingham, even now, mm -hmm. as much as we have progress, we need white people, white ministers, certainly more than they are to talk to white people about justice, about freedom, about accepting and working with black and vice versa. See, you're not going to let black people teach them. Yeah. Right? White people need to teach white people. This is the time when you put the past behind us. And this institution, this civil rights institution, is one of the greatest things, I think, that has been established in Birmingham so that we can understand our past. Oh. And white folk not, should not forget segregation. No more than Negroes should forget the fact that they were slaves mm -hmm. in this land. After 1965. I haven't said a lot about Revelation. You asked me, but we got off on that. Go ahead. After 65, we can come back. That's right. Um, the, the movement seemingly became more aggressive because you had uh, SNCC, who had who had become more aggressive and they changed that name from Student Nonviolent Coordinator to SNCC. This is a Student National Coordinator for that. Right. And the Black yeah, Panther Party Black, was also like power past. came up. Black power came up. How did that impact upon uh, upon the movement? You must remember, and at the time, and I was right there at the beginning. At the times of James Meredith's march, is when the Black Power enunciation became so uh, rampant and pervasive. I would. Uh, I would always speak and introduce Raph, and Raph would introduce Mark. And we start on that Mississippi Road, and Stoughton Carmichael would chant this black power. And it was really bothersome to Mark. But we had to stand our ground and move on. And we had a relationship. We, we never had an open argument about it. Uh, and everybody knew my position. I was not for black power. Uh, I was for power for all people, but I wasn't against these people who were not saying because we were saying, they were saying that we were sort of old happy, suffering all the time without uh, gaining appreciable uh, gains in this country. Mm -hmm. But we understood it and but we supported the students and the younger people's objectives at all the time. I don't think there's ever time that we went against what they were doing. Right. And Martin would say, I cannot endorse violence as a way of doing something, but that didn't stop it. It was almost a, it gave Stokely and others a chance to see, to, to get the contrast over. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you know, right now, anything that's contrasting is depressed, yeah. no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. In 66, 67, Dr. King came in in 67 when he made his first speech against the war yeah. in Vietnam. Um, how did that ring? I know with, uh, with SNCC, because they had been trying to get him to talk about the war mm -hmm. and against the war. Yeah. Um, how, did, how did that sit with, with uh, others in the movement? In the ACP and many others, really didn't take it as well as you would have thought. Although generally they knew that, that uh, war is wrong. But you remember our, our economy was built on a war. But and Martin felt necessary to come out with uh, SNCC and the others. This was right what they said because the goods were going into, uh, the war was taking up a lot of other things and still does. Uh, a lot of us in, in the movement with Martin felt as if he was taking a bold chance. I have always felt, though, that truth has to be told somehow now. When and how it is done may be uh, better done in one moment than another. 
But I knew the truth of what he was saying. And I knew that the government was not going to look with favor as it had. First of all, to begin with, the government was afraid of us. We wouldn't attack the government. We were trying to get justice within the system. But then Martin felt the necessity after he had uh, been speaking about injustice anywhere, the threat of justice everywhere. And then I think there were a lot of people, and you must remember now, I must confess, a lot of people talked to Martin that I did not know. I didn't, I'm not the sponsor of everything that Dr. Martin Luther King said, because there were people of all sorts and all persuasions and all ideas that could get uh, audience with him. And him being perhaps thrown in the position of being the uh, chief spokesman, the articulate person, articulate what people feel is a big burden on that. And he had to fight it, I'm sure, against many things. But I thought he was essentially right. And there were people on our own board who really disagreed vehemently. Mm -hmm. Was he speaking for SCLC or for Martin Luther King? He was speaking basically for Martin Luther King. And he felt like as a person he had to make that tax thing because he didn't, it wasn't the board that said, he said to, to the board, you know, what he felt and so forth. And in the ultimate, you must realize that every man must stand on his own conviction before God, you know. And, and even if it takes your hair to come out from this or that, you ought to have a central conviction. And your devotion ought to be what God said first. At that time, See, I think the, I think the Acts of the Apostles set an example. The early church for us, we ought to be God, brother, and man. That time also, he had started moving toward the poor people's campaign. Yes, uh, as you know, he died in the book well, before that accident happened. Yeah, he he was moving into it and. Johnson, you know, had launched the war on poverty. I think the seeds of it came out of that. And and you've got to look at history and governmental programs are set up on a, on a, on a, on an order that it has to have a structure. Well, many times a structure takes more than the fruits for the people down here. And 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 maybe some of the Conservatism, even now, would be good and, and, and criticism, but I think constructive criticism would have talked about uh, cre uh, uh, eliminating, uh, moving the excesses of the poverty program and making it so that it comes down uh, so that the people who are on the threshold of falling would be more benefit, even as right at this moment, the welfare thing that's going to be turned back to the state and it's going to create a terrific disability for a lot of people who are trying. Because if you don't uh, provide jobs for the people who get off welfare, they can. And if you limit the time, that's going to have to be revisited. And then the other thing is if you give jobs, jobs that's making five and six dollars an hour, can't pay rent and child care and all of that. So that's going to have to be provided. So there's always things to do so that when government structures are set up, and I hope that the government uh, will, will follow through the seat to it that the states do what they do with compassion and with some degree of meticulosity, but we must bear in mind that states' rights cannot go back to becoming what it was before the civil rights campaign. Right. Where were you today that Dr. King was assassinated? Uh, it was the third, as I recall. I was in my office because I was the, as I said before, we symbols with 
go in. We couldn't stay all the time. He had called me, I believe it was last time we talked, maybe a day or two before his death, or uh, either the week before. And he had talked about the Memphis situation. And many times, uh, the staff would be talking about things before I got it, because we went together all of the time. But he would call whenever he felt as if I needed a, we go get a situation that sustained where all of us, and sometimes all of our friends would be there together. And then again, if he couldn't be there, he's somewhere else, I would come in on raft and, 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 and other people. All, of course, uh, exalting and giving support to the local people. This is what I insisted on, that we should just go in and do our thing. It had to be a thing that you could get the local people together. And it was in seven that I really came to that conclusion and said to Mark, you cannot have people dividing under your leadership with you in seven. If you want to go out of seven movement, I said, Dr. King, that we have to be careful of this. So he said to me on this uh, Memphis thing that that we've got to go in and that uh, it was a sort of, uh, he was organizing, you know, all he could for the poor people's campaign. But then what, what better than for garbage workers, people who, people who spend their lives getting rid of our refuse, which would kill us if we didn't get rid of it. And how important were they in? And I told him, I said, well, you know, I, I don't need to be sold on this. You know, we're fighting for the little people. And we're fighting for the right of people to, to work. And despite excesses and unionism in some places, you still have to fight for people to be together and, and people come together. And so it wasn't a problem, but we had talked on that and one or two other things that we talked about. I had no idea that he was this close to that. But, you know, here again, I have to say that the, the speech that he articulated mentally my himself. To some degree and in some form, both he rap and most of us who led had said practically the same thing sometimes because you feel the closeness to the judge. Oh, yeah. And uh, you have to remember that everybody thought that I would be the first one to get killed. I did too. Uh, Dr. King thought I would be the first one to get killed. He and Ralph, we talked about the meetings, and, and several times we talk about um, bravery. And Dr. King said, well, Fred, you braver, you braver. I said, it isn't a matter of that. It's what you feel you have to do. And to a, a degree on a different scale, he felt the same thing, even by speaking out against the war. See? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we all felt that we were expendable, but it ought to be doing God's will. And I think that speech that he made, uh, that they played in his films, that uh, I want to be, I just want to do God's will. Drum major. Drum major, but he said, I want to do God's will. That's what, if people could uh, sort of bring in the midst of. Uh, much of what we do, at least bring a discussion, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring in our discussion, the thought of where is God's purpose? What, how does this relate to that? I think in leadership, Alabama leadership, and in leadership, this, we ought to be thinking about justice, as I say. And, and, and so when we're planning for our buildings, because buildings aren't people, when we're planning for our landscapes and everything, where is justice? How is it going to affect? That ought to be discussed. And that needs to be discussed. And, you know, as, as far as we have gone, Doctor, we've got a lot of mountains to cover here. That's right. and, and if we aren't careful, we will be majoring in things that may be minor in terms of importance. You know, the internet and the other thing shows how fast we can go. We don't even discover. We don't know the, 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 the benefits all of it, nor the dangers of a lot of stuff we've done. 
But it seemed to me that the brotherhood and justice and how it's going to affect people, even governmental programs that we talked about, that ought to be discussed. It ought to be discussed with the contractors, the business people, and even the young people who are black and becoming entrepreneurs and so forth. They ought to it ought to be a thing that's including our thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you don't think about something, you're just going to do it. And, and that's the challenge, I think, of, 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 of our moment now. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I uh, skipped over a very important portion. Oh, go ahead. This is your interview. That was the, uh, the um, march from Selma Montgomery. Oh, yes. That was, uh, now you must remember that the First march where they were beaten up, right? That was done mostly by John Lewis and Snick. That wasn't SCLC basically that that got any of them happy on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Snick, uh, John Lewis had broken with the rat, so called radical wing of Snick, mm -hmm. but they and and you must remember that. That, that that the some of the students, some of the radical part was still challenging people in Montgomery all around, being beaten up. So that the March of Selma, and I don't know all of the nuances of it, but I know John Lewis was in there, and whatever John Lewis was in there, he was going to be committed to non violence. And and I didn't really know because I probably would have plan to be been in it. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad you know the people can people can do things without me. I don't have to be in everything. Mm -hmm. And and the more the older I get the more conscious I am that my time is short anyway. You know. She was there for the second march. Oh yeah the second march is the one I know about. Mm -hmm. I know how the government was trying to dissuade us and all. But I am saying that so this march went on. Well then we had to we had to uh elect the students in Nashville came in on the freedom ride. We, 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 if we would have been true, we could not have been true to what we claim to be and leading people to stand up.